Again, thank you for joining us for our Cumberland Family Academy session tonight. Staying marketable, job search and resume tips. And Ms. Nori Brantley, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. George. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight to learn um, some tips about staying marketable. Um, so these are our objectives. Um, we're going to be looking at um, some keys, um, keys to a productive job search, um, to a quality resume, to a successful interview, and a successful job fair. So that's what you can expect to see and hear about tonight. Um, so this was just the blurb um, letting you know what you were going to be seeing tonight. So, of course, um, you know, you've got your workshop guidelines here, making sure that you're on mute. And any questions that you have, put them in the chat box. And we'll have a section, a time for that at the end to um, answer all of those questions. So let's jump right in and let's talk about the keys to a productive job search. So there's three keys. Um, you got to work it like it's a job. You got to remember that it's a numbers game and you got to follow up. So let's dive in and look at each one of those individually. All right, so work it like it's a job. So when you're looking for a job, you have to really be committed and be serious about the whole process of looking for a job. It's more complicated and more time consuming than anybody ever thinks it's gonna be. So it's something that you gotta work on every day like it was your job. Let your job become looking for a job until you um, secure the job that you're interested in. Um, it's easy to get discouraged, but stick with it. Again, just be reminded that everything takes longer than you think. It doesn't happen in a week or two weeks. Even after you apply, there's hiring windows. Um, then they have to go through the applications before they even ever start calling anybody in for an interview. So be committed and work on it every day, but don't get discouraged because it's going to take a while. So looking for a job is actually a numbers game. So it's really about applying for lots of jobs. So if you just apply to Wendy's or you just apply to PwC, just one place, and then you just sit and wait, you may or may not ever hear anything back because there's so many folks that are applying for jobs. There's so many people competing for these jobs. If you just apply for one job, you may never hear anything about it. So you got to make sure that you're applying for lots of jobs. If you're doing what the first slide said and work it like a job, you're applying for jobs every single day. So of course that's going to be second nature. Make sure that you tell everyone around you, everybody that you come in contact with, all your friends, that you're looking for a job. There's this thing called a hidden job market. And that's um, employment opportunities that aren't advertised. There's all kinds of companies every single day that are looking for people. They want to hire someone, but they don't advertise. They don't put it on Indeed. It's really just a word of mouth thing. So you've also probably heard the adage that, um, you know, it's who you know. That really comes into play. So if you're telling everyone you know, hey, I'm looking for a job. If you hear of anything, let me know. You might get a response back like, well, my brother owns a cleaners and he has been looking for some front counter help. Ding, ding, ding. Hidden job market. You've just tapped into it. So make sure you tell everybody you know that you're looking for something. Um, and ask where you shop and the different places that you patron. If you love shopping at Journeys in the mall, um, then you need to ask them about applying for a job there. I mean, why not work where you want to work um, at places that you like? There might be a great discount involved too um, for the content, for the materials and the supplies that they sell at that store. So that's a win-win. So apply for lots of jobs, telling everybody you know about it and ask at the places where you patron. So make sure also that you're using all of the different platforms. Um, Indeed, Snagajob, Glassdoor, Monster.com. Don't just rely on one because every business doesn't necessarily advertise at every place. So they may only do Indeed, so you're missing out on all of the opportunities 
on glassdoor.com. So you create a resume and upload it to each site, but I warn you or suggest that you don't use their resume platforms to build your resume because it's going to be very basic um, and it might not have all the information that you need. So create your own resume. We're going to talk more about resume tips in a little bit and then upload that effective, fabulous resume into each site. Indeed is really easy and you can and apply on your phone um, to jobs. So um, that's the one that I recommend, especially um, for young people, because they have a whole lot of retail and entry level positions listed on Indeed, and it's so easy to use. But create your resume somewhere else and then upload it. So here is the step in the job search that most people don't utilize. So you've um, applied for lots and lots of jobs. Um, you have um, told everybody that you know. And then you just kind of stop and wait and sit back and wait to hear from people. But here's the key that's going to make a difference in your job search is for you to follow up. So I want you to keep a list of all the jobs that you've applied for, especially the date. Now, you can do an old school like me, write it in a notebook that you applied at PwC for um, the co customer call programs position on Thursday, April 27th, okay? Um, because that's so important because what you're going to do is one week after you apply, you're going to call those people. So let's say you applied at PwC or you applied at Wendy's or you applied um, at the City of Fable, anywhere you applied, okay? So you got your, your handy-dandy notebook. Maybe you put it in a, an electronic spreadsheet, in an Excel spreadsheet, or maybe you just wrote the notes on your phone. Doesn't matter how you keep up with it. Just make sure you keep up with it. And then one week later, so I applied to PwC last Tuesday. So Tuesday next week, I'm going to call them and I'm going to say, hi, this is Noreen Brantley. And I applied for the customer um, call programs position last Tuesday. Here's the kicker. You say, I want to check on the status of that application. And so what you're going to hear a couple of different answers. We're still working on that. We're still processing those applications. Well, then you should say, well, I'd really like to come in for an interview to tell you why I'm the perfect person for the job. Ding, ding, ding. You ask for that interview. OK, so they might say, thank you. We, I'm sorry, but we've already hired for that position. Well, you might be mad about it, but never burn any bridges. You don't know when you may have to come back to PwC. So you just say very politely, thank you very much, and you hang up. Or they might say, well, um, Brittany does the hiring and she's not here. So you ask, well, when um, would be a good time for me to call Brittany back? And what's Brittany's last name? And you ask that, and then you call back at three o'clock or on tomorrow when Brittany's back on her shift, and you call and ask Brittany for Brittany and check on the status of your application. Following up makes all the difference. Um, there's a lot of places that don't hire unless or consider you for hire until you follow up. Unfortunately, there's a whole lot of people out there who are applying for jobs, but they don't necessarily want to work. They may be applying for jobs for unemployment benefits, which is a requirement. They may be applying for jobs because the mama said that they had to apply for jobs, but they don't really want to work. But mama says they have to. So anyway, you have to set yourself apart from those people who are not serious job searchers and following up demonstrates that. That makes the difference. I had one young lady in my office and she had applied for a job at one of the movie theaters. I think it was Patriot um, the other year. And I told her, I says, come back in here in a week and let's call and follow up. So she did. And they offered her an interview right there on the spot. So calling back, checking on the status, but also remembering if they don't offer you an interview, ask for an interview. No harm, no foul. Following up, key, key to this process. All right, so let's jump into the resume. So um, you want to make sure to create a quality resume that you've got to avoid common mistakes. You got to create an effective resume and you got to keep up with the trend. So let's look at some of that information. 
So um, this content um, of, about avoiding mistakes comes from Career Builder. And so these are the top mistakes that people make um, when they create their resume. So a big problem, if you look here up at the top with me, is that people have typos, they have errors in their resume. You've got to edit. It, I would even suggest you let someone else look at it. You know what you want it to say. And so sometimes you miss your own mistakes. So have someone else check for typos. Some people even lie on their resumes. And I say never, never do that with the internet and with um, the way things are today. People can find out anything. So always tell the truth on your resume. So right here, unprofessional emails, 35 percent of people make a mistake and they have some silly email hot baby girl at aol.com and that's going to keep you from getting hired so if you don't have a professional email what i suggest you do is just set up a free gmail account and just use your name nori brantley 1984 at gmail.com super professional and that way you just use that for your job search and you don't have a lot of other spam and junk in there. 34% um, of people who um, make mistakes on their resume fail to add quantifiable results and what that means is they're looking for numbers. Now a lot of folks who um, have are applying for entry-level positions don't have a lot of those. If you were in a more professional position where you increase sales by 25 percent um, or um, you had a hundred percent attendance rate that's what we're looking for. Quantifiable results means that there's a number attached and um, so if you can put some of that information, if you have that information, definitely add it in your resume. Make sure, though, that you don't do long, boring paragraphs of information. 25% of people do that, and that's a big no-no. It needs to be bullets. It needs to be quick because hiring managers don't spend much time looking over resumes before they make decisions to keep or toss. So you want to also avoid a generic resume. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, you, you want it to be reflective of your skills and be a little more specific for specific industries. And the last one there, um, exceeding two pages. Hiring managers do not have time for more than one page. So keep your resume to one page. So just a little tidbit of information there in the middle of the screen, the average number of resumes that are submitted for a corporate job opening is 250. So they have 250 resumes submitted. How many are they going to interview? Four to six people. That's not many. And of course, how many are going to get that job? Just one. So it's very, very competitive. And there's a lot of things that go into it. And you want to make sure that you have the best resume. So how do we create that effective resume? Well, here's a few things that you need to do to increase the effect of, of effectiveness of your resume. You want to make sure that you're starting your sentences with action verbs, okay? If you're not sure what that is, Google action verbs um, for resumes, and you'll see words like manage and um, and not, not just that I rang up um, sales or that I ran the cash register, that you managed the front desk or um, the front, um, the main cash register in, in dealing with people. You want to make sure that you send your resumes, that you submit them in the morning. I thought this was a fabulous tip that our young people don't think about it. They're making and responding to emails at 10 or 11 o'clock and that's when you should not be sending it. You want to submit those resumes in the morning, business hours, or so that they're waiting at eight o'clock or nine o'clock when hiring managers get to work. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. is when you submit. Always make sure you're sending your resumes um, to current job postings, one to four days old. You may see a job listing. Um, look very closely. It's probably down at the bottom. It'll tell you how old it is or when it was posted. If it was posted 20 days ago, don't even waste your time. It's not worth it. Stay current. That's another reason to um, work your job search like you're looking for a job is that you stay current and you're actively applying for jobs, lots of jobs um, day to day.
Um, make sure you include a key skills section. Hiring managers want to look at a resume and be able to tell right away if you are qualified for the position. So you want to make sure you put your skills on there. But you don't use personal pronouns. You don't say, I did this and I did that. Leave it in bullet forms and just list what you did, um, including strong leadership-oriented words. Again, managed, created, those types of words. You don't want to say that you're a team player. That's overdone. It's washed out. They don't give it much credit anymore. Um, as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, you know, if you can demonstrate results with numbers, that's ideal. And you want to make sure that you use keywords and industry jargon. What's jargon? Um, jargon are the terms and the words and the acronyms that are used within an industry. So if you're in the IT field, you want to talk IT. You want to talk about HTML and those different um, programs that you know how to use. Um, if you're in the marketing or advertising industry, you want to use words um, that are associated or used within that industry. So those are a few of the common mistakes and that people make and ways to create an effective resume. So let's look at a few trends here. So you want to do a spiel, spiel, pardon me, a field specific resume. So back in the old day, old school, they told us you just need one resume, make it very generic and send it out to everybody. That is not a con, a trend for today. What you should do is have a couple of different resumes that are just, they don't have to be um, hugely different, but you need some of that um, technical jargon on them. You need them at least for different industries. If you're applying for retail, you're going to need one type of resume. If you're applying for a warehouse position, then you're going to need a different resume. Um, and again, that helps hiring managers to see that you are qualified for the job right away. Again, keep it short. They don't have time to review a long application. They most of the time are scanning them. They're looking for your work experience. They're looking for your education and they're looking for your skill set. Make sure those things are front and center. Make sure you're using those dynamic words. Again, Google dynamic words to use in a resume. That's going to pull up and going to show you all types of words and you're going to you're going to pull out your plain um, verbs and replace them with dynamic action verbs. Um, also keep in mind the type of resume format that you use. So there's basically a reverse chronological, functional, and combined. So reverse chronological means that you start with the most recent job that you have and work backwards. And your work history is the main meat or body of your resume, whereas a functional resume, your skills and what you know how to do. Like if you, um, maybe you haven't had a lot of jobs, but you've had a lot of training in the IT field, so you would list your skill set. That would be on a functional resume. Most people use a combination of both. They list their jobs, starting with the most recent and working back, um, but then they make sure that they list their skills. So it's a combination of functional and reverse chronological. But don't get too um, fancy in the design of the resume because that can put some um, hiring managers off. So these are a few tips for um, or trends that are going on with resumes today. So you can have a great one. All right. So let's move on and let's talk about interviews. So you did a great job search. You had an effective resume and now you have a resume. Yay, yay, the system's working. So you got to make sure you know what to wear, what to say, and what to do. Let's find out what those things are. So everybody always says, does it really matter what you wear? Yes, yes, and yes. OK, like it or not, everybody is judged on how they look. Everybody, like I said, we don't like to admit it, but everybody is. And here's a cliche for you. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. And what does that mean? Is that means there's only one time that people see you for the first time. You don't get a redo over that. So 
for an interview, you need to make sure that you are looking sharp. Um, you're going to feel confident if you are in the right outfit. Others are going to think that you're professional. Ooh, look at her. Look how professional she looks. If you look professional, you are going to be perceived as professional if you are dressed that way. Just like if you show up to a resume and you're not looking sharp and you got on some jeans and you're, um, you don't have on a button up shirt, people are going to think that you're ill prepared and that you are not professional, even though you might be. The outfit can make or break you. So yes, yes, yes. It certainly matters what you wear. Let's talk a little bit more about that specifically. So here's some great pictures of what you should wear to a resume, to a resume, pardon me, to a job interview. So um, you'll see a couple of different levels here. If you're going for a corporate job, you definitely want to dress like the two folks in the middle, the guy and the girl here. If you're a guy and you're going for an interview in a corporate position, you need to have on a jacket, you need to have on a tie, um, you need to be dressed for success like that, like our lady there in the middle with her blue jacket. Most of the time you say, oh no, no loud colors, but that works. It's still very conservative. Take note of the length of her skirt. It's below her knees, that's key. You don't want to have to worry about your skirt riding up. And when you sit down, you want to make sure that your skirt covers your knees so you're completely professional. Look at their hair. Everybody in this picture, everybody's well-groomed. There's no hair in the face. Even if you like to wear a side swoop, like the, the young lady in pants in the gray jacket on, on my left. I mean, her hair is great. Um, sometimes young people especially like the style of it swooped a little deeper and part of one eye covered. Not for your interview. You want to make sure that that is not the case. Everybody has on some sort of jacket. Um, that's really a key to, to your outfit looking a little bit more polished. Even a cardigan, ladies, makes a difference and can take um, a pair of pants, just not jeans. Don't be wearing jeans for a resume. I mean, for an interview, I keep saying that. You can wear something other than formal dress pants, but she has on that cute professional gray jacket. Um, she's got on nice heels. Ballet flats would work. You don't have to wear heels. You need to be in a comfortable and confident outfit. Pants are fine. Again, skirt's fine. Um, make sure that you're avoiding loud colors. You know, you need to think navy, black khaki, brown. Neutral colors are always best. Now, if you are going for an interview at a fast food restaurant, guys and girls, um, a pair of non-jeans, a pair of pants, and uh, a polo or ladies, a blouse and a cardigan is absolutely fine. Guys, you can roll in there in your khaki pants and have on a polo tucked in, and that's absolutely fine. You don't want to be severely overdressed. If you're going for a job interview, guys, at... Um, um, a Jiffy Lube, you don't want to show up in a suit because they're not going to take you seriously. So you wear your khakis, you wear a polo style shirt and tuck it in and you're good to go. Now, a few things um, you need to make sure that you don't wear any cologne. A lot of people don't think about this because they think, well, I'm getting all dressed up and I'm looking professional. I want to smell good. Well, you don't. Um, you don't know if the person who's interviewing you has allergies or has asthma or just they might not like the smell of your cologne. So do not wear any cologne or any perfume. Just be clean. Let Just have a clean smell, no perfume. Um, if you look in this picture, the jewelry that everybody has on is very understated. And that needs to be the key. Um, earrings are fine. Just small earrings are fine. A necklace is fine. Just um, a conservative necklace. Um, make sure your hair's out of your face, which I already mentioned. And we have to talk about facial piercings. So the problem with leaving your piercings in is that you never know who is going to be interviewing you. So if you have um, a nose ring and you interview with a younger person, then they're probably going to be okay with your nose ring. But if you're interviewing with a 60-year-old man, 
he is probably going to be very turned off and think negatively about that nose ring. It also depends on the industry. Some companies, <coughs> or like the hospital, you can't have pink hair and a nose ring. They just don't allow that. So do some research in your industry, but you're always safer to either take it out just for the day for the interview, or if you have to leave something in there, make it as the tiniest little thing you can. Um, if you're going for a job as a receptionist in a tattoo parlor, of course, if you've got a, a nose ring, that's probably okay, but just use your smaller one um, for that day. So that gives you an idea of what to wear um, for your interview. All right, so now let's go into the tricky part. You look great, you're professional, but now you got all of these questions. An interview is all about questions and you need the right answers to have a successful interview. So let's look at some of those. These are a couple of questions that are asked at most job interviews or some um, version of these questions. They almost always say, tell me about yourself. Okay. They only want to know job related stuff. Okay. Don't tell them that you like to hang out. Don't tell them you like to chill. Don't tell them you like to party. That's not what they want to know. They're not interested that you like to play basketball unless you are the captain of your school's basketball team, and that demonstrates leadership, okay? You wouldn't tell them that you're, an, um, that you're an avid reader necessarily unless you're going for a job where you're going to be doing lots of editing and your vocabulary and the words you know would make a big difference. You know, you can tell them where you grew up or where you went to school. If you are 21 but you look 17, you want to tell them how old you are, okay? If you're 30, you probably don't want to tell them how old you are, and that's okay. If you're 50, you probably don't want to tell them how old you are. But if you're younger, you do. Um, definitely tell them, you know, where, where, where you went to school because you go in and you say, oh, hi, I went to Reed Ross High School. What? Oh, I did too. What year did you graduate? Ding, ding, ding. Instant connection. Instant connection. They're going to remember you if nothing else. And that might even give you a slight advantage because a cougar wants to hire another cougar. So they might ask you, why should we hire you? They ask that question a lot in interviews. Well, tell them that you would be a great candidate because you're smart and that you're dependable. Um, tell them that you are the right person for the job because you can learn how to do anything. That's my go-to. I might not be as familiar with all of the jargon in this new industry that I'm getting in, but I'm smart and I can learn how to do anything. That's what I always lead with. Lead with. So they might ask you, why do you want to work here? And that's a question that you need to do your research ahead of time, okay? So before you apply for a job at PwC, you need to do a little research about PwC. Now, what you're looking for is just something about their mission or their core values that appeal to you. So maybe the environment is very important to you. And so you see all of the green initiatives that that company has. And so you would say, oh, that's, I want to work here because I, I am all about environmental issues and I love it that you have seven green initiatives. Ding, ding, ding. They're going to love that. You need to just pick out a few things um, from their company website. Nothing about pay or vacation. You don't ever talk about that kind of stuff, but things you like about, like I said, their core values or um, initiatives that you can really get behind. It's really just about um, planning and knowing what to say. Always focus on the positive and only talk about what is good about you. You don't ever talk about negative things. Um, you can tell them that you're organized or that you're punctual, that you're good at math, that you're a hard worker, that you pay attention to detail. You always finish your assignments, you're dependable, and you work well with people. All those are great examples of what to say when they say, tell me about yourself or why we should hire you or why do you want to work here? So there are a few things that you should leave out. 
Okay. You always want to keep it positive and you want to be professional all the time. You don't want to talk about negative things, even if they're true. Okay. Now you're always a hundred percent honest. You never lie about anything, but you don't go into the, the, the negative or if it's a, a negative situation, you got to quickly put a positive spin on it. You know, we don't want to hear slang, especially if you're an older person um, interviewing, you don't want to hear, nah, yeah, huh, no prob. You don't want to hear that kind of slang. So when you're interviewing, you need to um, use your best grammar. You need to enunciate and, um, do your very best to speak professionally. You know, you never say anything negative about a previous employer. So even if your former boss was crazy, 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 you don't say that. Um, you don't ever say anything negative. And let me give you an example. So let's say I'm interviewing you and you say you went to Douglasburg High School. And I was like, oh, did you ever have a teacher named um, Miss Jones, uh, Miss Regina Jones? And they go, oh, yes, she was the meanest teacher I ever had. Oh, gosh, she failed me. And, and then I say, that was my mom. So what do you think are your chances of getting that job now that you bad mouth the interviewer's mom? Don't do that. Never say anything negative about a previous employer or say anything negative about anybody because you don't know who people know. Okay. You also want to leave out things that make you look bad. Focus on the positive. So here are a few examples that people have used in interviews that you never say. These are the don't do's, like what not to wear. All right, so never say that you are OCD. First off, that is a clinical diagnosis. If you really are OCD, that's private and you aren't telling anybody that, okay? Never say, oh, I don't really like people. Okay, well, why am I gonna hire you in this customer service position if you don't like people? You've knocked yourself out of the running. Don't tell interviewers that you're leaving as soon as possible to go into the military or, hey, as soon as my dad can hire me with his company, I'm leaving. They're not going to hire you. They don't, first off, you don't know exactly the date when you're leaving, so don't tell them the date, okay? They're not going to hire you if they think that you're going to be leaving short term, okay? Don't tell anybody that you take medicine, Again, that's private, that's confidential stuff, that's none of the employer's business. Keep that to yourself. People can, can give off a bad vibe and somebody judge you and make a negative assumption about you based on some medication you take. Don't tell them. It's none of their business. Please do not tell them that you get mad really easy and that you could just go off at any time. Again, I don't want to hire that person that I'm worried is going to go off on my customers, okay? Um, don't tell them that you hated your last job. Even if you did, don't tell them that you hated your last job. So it is very important to keep it positive and keep it professional when you're talking in an interview. All right, so let's move on to the career fair success. So a lot of uh, companies and um, different agencies are having career fairs, and there's a few things that you can do that'll really set you apart. And so you need to practice your introduction or your elevator speech. You need to remember the little details because they're very important and make sure that you are polite and respectful to everyone all the time. So let's talk about that a little bit. So you're looking good because you're dressed just right. You're sounding good because you know all the answers to the questions. Now let's dazzle them, okay? So let's talk about your elevator speech or your introduction. So when you're at a career fair, that's basically what you're doing the whole time. You're introducing yourself to one company after another, okay? So the best thing to do is to write it up and practice it. So this one that I wrote here on your screen, this is, of course, more of a, a high school or a recent high school graduate. So it would be like this. Hi, I'm Nori Brantley. I grew up here in Fayetteville and I graduated from Reed Ross High School. I have always been interested in computers, everything from software to hardware. I'm organized, I'm punctual, and very 
dependable. Okay, I checked all the boxes. I told them where I went to school, maybe to make a connection. Um, I told them that I love computers because I want to get this entry level IT job. I also told them three things about me. I'm organized, I'm punctual, I'm dependable. All of those are work related things. Here's what not to do. Yeah, I'm Nori. I'm a junior. Um, I like to chill, play basketball. Not sure what else you want to know. Everything is wrong with that. No last name. Started with some slang. Yeah. Mm -mm. Enthusiasm. You have to act like you want to be there. Okay. We don't want to be telling people that we like to chill. Okay. Everybody likes to hang out and relax. That's not work related. So we don't want to talk about that. So what if you play basketball? Again, unless you were the team captain of bas the basketball team. So not sure what you want to know. You need to have yourself together. You need to write it down and practice it in front of the mirror so that you're, you're comfortable just saying it. You don't have to memorize it word for word. That's not really practical, but you need to be comfortable enough that you can introduce yourself because that's what you do at a career fair. So there's a lot of little things that make the difference. So when you first arrive at the career fair, you need to act like you want to be there. And I know that sounds silly, but if you go in there and you're tired and you don't really want to go, and again, your mom or your dad told you that you had to go and you don't really want to go there, they're, the employers that are there are going to read that all over your face. Okay. Also, you need to make sure that even in the parking lot, when you get out of the car, that you're not on your phone. You need to make sure that you're already put together, okay? You're not putting your shoes on as you're getting out of the car. You don't know how many company reps are in the parking lot and they watched you finish getting dressed and then you come into the career fair, they're not really going to want to talk to you because they watched you put your shoes on in the parking lot. So get yourself together before you go in, okay? So I mentioned it before, make sure your cell phone is not visible. Don't see it. Don't put it in your back pocket, especially one of these great big cell phones. Don't put it in your pocket. Certainly don't have it in your hand. Um, if you carry a purse in, put it in your purse, put it on silent so that it's not visible and you can't hear it whatsoever. Now, if they say take down our number or you need to pull up something on your phone, then you can certainly pull it out of your purse if needed. Okay, or put it at, pull it out of your suit jacket, but it's better. And if you don't have it with you, that's what I would say. Leave it in the car. If you drove yourself, leave it in the car because you're not going to get in trouble that way. You also need to make sure that you are smiling and that you are making contact with everyone. Now, some of my young people say, Miss Brantley, that's kind of creepy. No, it's not. It's pleasant. And you, I mean, you're not going, okay, I saw them. Okay, I looked at them. I look. That's not what I mean. It means you glance over and you smile and then you move on to the next person. Okay, that's smile and making contact with everyone. So at the career fair, a lot of times you're standing around waiting. You're waiting your turn to talk with the hiring manager. Okay, so you while you're waiting in line, you need to make sure that you're paying attention to what's going on around you. So that's another reason to have your phones put away. Phones at a job fair are very distracting and they keep your focus away from the actual job search. So you're standing there, but you need to be looking around if you're standing in line and paying attention because there might have been an extra rep at the end of the table and they are motioning for you to come on and talk to them. Whereas if you're just standing there kind of going, doo, 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 not paying attention, you're going to miss them saying, come down here, I want to talk to you. Now, you also may be standing in a crazy long line because you want to apply at Walmart distribution and you look over and there's some tables that there's nobody at all. Step away from that long line. Go talk to the people who don't have anybody in line. You don't know what kind of opportunities they have or what you may be missing out on, okay? So make sure you're paying attention. Somebody may look at you and be so impressed with how professional that you look that they are saying, come here, come here. We, we want to talk to you, come here. And if you're oblivious, you're not paying attention, you could miss out on a great opportunity. Make sure, of course, that you are polite and you are respectful to everyone, 
okay? You don't know who's reporting back. And one hiring manager at one table may have watched you be rude or disrespectful to someone at another table because it's in a small space. So they're hearing all this stuff and they may not want to talk to you because they saw you be rude to someone else. So make sure you are polite and respectful to everyone, no matter what. All right, let's seal the deal here. So you've been to the job fair, you're looking great, you're saying all the right things, you're polite to everyone. Now, this first statement was kind of pre-COVID, offer to shake hands with the company reps. Nowadays with COVID, that kind of changed things. So what I want you to do then is focus on that second bullet, is to smile and make contact with all of the company representatives. When you walk up, um, there may be five people sitting there from PwC. You need to make sure that you smile and look and um, acknowledge each one of those people. Even if you end up just talking to maybe the one in the middle, um, you still need to acknowledge the other folks and thank them all for their time at the end. You know, listen very careful to their questions. A lot of times um, you hear part of a question and you start formulating your answer and you didn't hear the second part of the question. So make sure you listen to the whole question and know that it is okay to pause, to think about your answer, to kind of collect your thoughts before you give an answer. Now make sure that answer is not a yes or no, no, yes, but you don't want to go on and on. So you want to answer in a full sentence and give them um, a more of an answer than a yes or a no. Um, again, talk about what you're good at. Um, if you're a recent graduate, talk about what classes that you liked in school or if you're a recent college graduate. Um, again, talk about what makes you the one to hire. The whole point of a job interview or a career fair is to sell yourself. Some people think that when you say that you're smart and organized, that that's bragging. OK, and nobody wants to be boastful or to brag. But at a job interview and a career fair, what you're doing is selling you. And you're the only one that's going to talk about you. You're the only one that's going to say how great you are. That's not bragging. That's not being boastful. That's selling yourself. And that's exactly what you need to do at a career fair. So in wrapping things up, you know, it can be hard. Um, finding the right job, but with effective keys. If you have skills um, for your job search, for your resume, for your job interview, and for your career fair, you will be able to secure the right job for you. And so that's what all this information has been about tonight is to give you the keys so that when you are looking for a job and creating a resume and going on job interviews and career fairs that you have everything that you need to be successful, you can do it.